Playing all difficulty modes reveals how shallow difficulty really is. One of the worst discussions that have entered the gamer discourse is that around difficulty modes. What was once standard practice has transformed into what is frequently just an ego-stroking contest, wherein the concept of easy is ridiculed and excluded while the concept of hard offers clout and prestige. Because of the single difficulty, universal experience of the Souls games, people wrapped up even more of their personal identity with the experience of overcoming a difficult challenge. Often, as people who love and finish from software's RPGs, as people who saw the rise of a niche community become bigger, broader, and more global, people cling desperately to that feeling of belonging by clinging to difficulty and excluding anyone who questions it. Speaking from personal experience, one will quickly realize how much gatekeeping fans of Souls games are capable of if one even suggests that anything could be changed to redesign for the sake of accessibility or reduced difficulty. Or really, if anything were to be changed at all, regardless of topic. What is always terribly missing from this conversation is to what extent a game is actually improved by increasing its difficulty. When there is only one difficulty mode, there is never any direct analog by which to measure how difficulty actually impacts the experience. Difficulty in a game is not an objective measure, but a subjective experience based on one's personal skill and experience posed against the statistics, speed, and surprises of the game design. The only way to directly feel what difficulty means to a game is by playing a game that has multiple difficulty modes. Play them each and then compare. I even have the perfect game for this, Yis 9 Monstrum Nox. There are a few reasons why this game is such a good analog for the modern dialogue around difficulty. Dodge rolling for perfect defense and time stop, progressively increased player stats, progressively increased enemy health and damage, and most directly comparable to Souls games, the changes in animation speeds and thus the rhythm of combat. By playing the 10 minute demo on every difficulty until we die, we can actually get a feel for how going through different difficulty modes actually impacts the experience of the game. Before we go through each difficulty setting, I want to highlight that I have always held a very strange belief about how players should approach difficulty modes and how designers should incorporate them. I like to think that the hardest difficulty that a game presents should be tied to the experience that the game developers want to create for the player. Not difficulty for its own sake, but toward the end of being the best version of the game's themes and overall feeling. To that end, any mode easier than the hardest difficulty should be about training the player to play that game. My experience with Yis 9 shows a clear progression of both skill and knowledge, and I only played the game for about 45 minutes while watching the end of the Game Awards 2022. Sadly, I did not win a Valve Steam Deck. Valve, please send me a Steam Deck. I deserve one. When playing on easy mode, I acted slowly and haphazardly, not fully grasping the controls and the special abilities. I was fairly bad at the game, even though the challenge was nearly absent. I never struggled for health or to defeat enemies, but I did struggle to simply move and control the camera the way the game expected me to. I struggled with toggling the lock-on system so that I could look around. And only later did I accept that the game's aggressive re-centering of the camera meant it simply didn't want me looking up or down. <laughs> when, uh, when playing on normal, I got a bit faster, but enemies clearly took more hits. 
I didn't struggle with the movements alone, and my familiarity with the map meant I didn't really need to uh, explore the, uh, well, they called the dungeon a, a cloaca. So uh, no, I, I didn't explore that. But on hard difficulty, I honestly barely noticed a difference between its moment-to-moment -moment combat and that of normal mode. The main difference was that everything took just a little bit more time. As such, I ran out of time in the demo right as I was about to defeat the boss of the dungeon. Thus, having gained that knowledge, and having had time to develop my rhythm with the controls, and becoming more familiar with all the different skills and systems for doing damage, uh, on Nightmare difficulty, I actually felt as though I found a sweet spot. I skipped through fighting the dungeon enemies because I wanted to defeat both bosses before time ran out. Yet, despite taking some hits and needing to use a few healing items, I beat the bosses before the time limit while using the full array of game mechanics made available to me. However, going into Inferno difficulty was ridiculous. Much like my experience with Bloodborne, Dark Souls 3, Sekiro, and Elden Ring, taking even one hit put my characters in a position where I needed to stop and heal. Even as I was healing, I would often still be in the hurt box of the boss's attack and get hit again. The boss's attack animation speed was double that of Nightmare difficulty, so I had to start pressing buttons faster, reacting faster, and attacking faster while still leaving time to dodge away after the attack animation concluded and before the enemy's attack landed. No frame cancelling in this game, just like Dark Souls, and despite having been able to survive enough to bring the boss's health down about halfway, it felt like half Half of that time was spent opening and closing the menu rather than playing the video game. It was thoroughly unenjoyable, and I did not even want to try my hand at lunatic difficulty, where the attack animation speed gets doubled again. When I see a game like this, where Clearly, difficulty modes exist both to allow players to choose the experience they feel most satisfied with, while also offering challenges to experienced players, and trolling with extremely high difficulty modes only to be mastered by the most ludicrous of style beasts. I have to realize that difficulty modes have so many different reasons for existing. For accessibility, for fun, for feeling challenged, for having a laugh at the player's expense, for being impressive on YouTube when you can do things no one else dares to try. However, I found actually going through the difficulty modes, in the way I prescribed, was valuable for me by allowing me to train myself to get good at the game by letting me quickly engage with everything the game has to offer in a gradual way, I was able to improve my skill, increase the difficulty I wanted to experience, and find the level of challenge that best helped me experience flow. I didn't have to simply guess on the menu screen and think about adjusting it later, nor did the game developers have to guess at which experience of difficulty was the correct one for most people who would play their game. I would never have chosen Hard or Nightmare Mode as my first choice, but for Yeast 9, now I might. And as a result, I would end up having an experience that I know suits my specific needs and tastes, rather than leaving it up to chance. I can't help but think that if difficulty modes facilitated choosing which mode you, as a player, enjoy the most before you have to make your decision by letting you try out each difficulty in the way I tried each of these difficulties in this demo, we would have more open and varied opinions about how difficulty modes can be implemented into games. In this, the year of our Miyazaki 2023. Stay true.